The UH-1B Hiyadori is a Rank 5 Japanese utility helicopter with a battle rating of 8.0 in realistic battles. It was introduced in Update Starfighters. A little bit of history on it by Mr. Mikihoshi. The Japanese ground self-defense force quickly realized the potential of combat maneuvers between helicopters and ground forces to be able to supply and provide fire support quickly and effectively while also transporting infantry into battle. In 1959 the Bell UH-1 entered service with the US Army. This vehicle proved to fit the needs of a true medium-sized general purpose helicopter to replace their aging H-19Cs. Fuji would soon be able to obtain the license to the UH-1B, originally receiving the designation HU-1B. With manufacturing in Japan approved, the production of the UH-1B started immediately. Officially in Japanese Ground Self-Defense Force receiving the formal name of Hiyadori, or Bulbul in English, after a type of medium-sized songbird. Production commenced in 1962 and ran until 1972 for a total of 90 UH-1Bs produced. The Fuji UH-1B was a exact copy of the Bell UH-1B and was powered by the licensed produced core Asuki T53K5, producing 960 horsepower. As weapon trials of the H-13H began with various armament, it was realized a larger more powerful helicopter was needed for a more practical air support role. By 1967 plans were underway to fit the UH-1B with 70mm unguided rockets, and in 1978 UH-1Bs were spotted at the total thermal power exercise in Japan carrying rocket pods. The UH-1B would later be complemented by the much improved UH-1H, and later replaced by the UH-1G. However neither the UH-1H or UH-1G have been armed or have planned to be armed with offensive weapon capabilities. The UH-1B would officially be retired in 1992, marking a quarter of a century's worth of service. Now onto the arguably best IFV in the game. Let us see what wiki says about it. The Type 89 is a rank 6 Japanese light tank with a battle rating of 8.3. It was introduced in update 1.85 Supersonic. The full name is known as the Mitsubishi Type 89 Infantry Fighting Vehicle. The Type 89 provides an auto cannon weapon combined with an anti-tank guided missile for a diverse range of attack methods. General info survivability and armor. While the Type 89's armor consists of rolled homogeneous armor, it is not any better than modern light tanks of other factions, which use double or even triple the amount of aluminium to give roughly the same amount of protection. This means that its sides and even angled turret will still be vulnerable to all auto cannons and will hull break easily if hit in a weak spot. One such weak spot is the suspension. For example, hitting the back wheels of the chassis with a 105mm chemical shell may annihilate the entire tank. Any 120mm and higher kinetic shells hitting the hull will also likely instantly hull break it. The armor profile can be closely compared to Merkov MK1. It has a long hull with turret on the back, and the entire retty of it is sloped as much as possible. This means that an accurate frontal hull shots will likely bounce, and this tank should always face the opponent. Unfortunately, due to how big the turret is, the bounced shell might actually fly straight into it, and there aren't any special shields or additional armor for the turret crew on this tank. Internal module placement is rather smart on paper, with the driver and machine gun operator hiding on the right side of the tank, and main weapon crew hiding at the back along with ammunition while the rest of the tank is one giant engine compartment, sealed off with a 5mm, rolled homogeneous armor screen. In reality, the means of protecting the crew and critical weak points are insufficient. Most notably, the driver isn't completely sealed away from tank's front and the turret. Due to overall low thickness of armor type 89 can get overmatched. Whenever the tank hull side is even slightly opened, 
it will get easily penetrated by big guns, the armor is thick enough to trigger armor penetrating high explosive fuses, and even if it is a slow 19mm fuse, it will trigger off hitting the engine, and rolled homogeneous armor screen, then cause violent explosions next to ammo rack, aside from the already extreme likelihood of a hull break. Pure armor penetrating shells even of a small caliber auto cannon will fly straight through the entire engine compartment, likely hitting the turret crew or ammo rack in the very back of the tank. It is also possible to lose the entire tank crew to a single coaxial auto cannon spray from the right side, as nothing is protecting the driver there. The one scenario in which the sealed compartment can truly work is when the Type 89 is driving around the town or hiding from snipers behind buildings, and someone suddenly shoots engine compartment into direction opposite from the crew, then enemy armor penetrating high explosive may simply get stuck there, doing reduced damage to the turret crew. This does not make the situation any better though, as without team help, or a very unlikely ATGM counterattack, Type 89 will still get repeatedly set on fire until it explodes. Recommendations. Keep your opponents in front of you, if you can't, at least keep them on your left. Avoid being shot directly by 120 plus millimeter shells. Do not needlessly taunt enemy SBAA. In close quarters you can be extremely aggressive, and destroy enemy weapon or gunner, as soon as possible. Otherwise try to scout enemies and hope, to fire first or that there is a sniper to cover your back. On to some mobility, on hard, flat terrain. The Type 89 will easily keep pace or outspeed many other vehicles due to its reasonable power to weight ratio of 23 horsepower per ton. On soft, hilly terrain the Type 89 loses a lot of its speed advantage. This is due to the fact that the gearbox only provides 4 separate forward speeds. Due to the long gearing the Type 89 will often find itself unable to climb hills in gear 2, and will have to change to gear 1 which provides a top speed of just 9 km per hour for hill climbing. This means the Type 89 is often less mobile on hilly terrain than medium tanks. This problem can be mitigated to some extent by maintaining a good amount of speed, 30 plus km per hour, and not stopping when traveling up hills. It is impossible to drive forward and turn at the same time while in forward gear 1, which is a huge detriment in melee combat. Driver has to either turn with neutral steer while being stationary, or speed up enough to shift to gear 2 and then turn. As with Type 60 SVRG, reverse gear is much more responsive, and will allow you to maneuver and retreat back around the corner during combat, use it if tank was forcibly stopped. Main armament. The Type 89 is equipped with a 35mm Olican KDE auto cannon, which is similar to the KDA variant used by the Jeopard the Type 87, and the Chieftain Marksman, and is widely considered to be one of the most effective guns in regards to damage output and reliability. This is due to their moderate caliber and rate of fire. 35mm is the largest of the small auto cannons which allows it to have a much higher rate of fire than any 40mm or 57mm system. The difference between them is that KDE cannon fires slower than KDA, but it uses tank specific ammunition instead, which makes it behave differently. For example, APIT will explode after penetration regardless of armor thickness, because planes have no armor, while armor penetrating high explosive will explode, only if it penetrates about 9 to 15 millimeters. Equivalent of rolled homogeneous armor, like with any normal tank shells. However, it generally does slightly more damage if it does explode. Due to this, KDE shells also have a tendency to penetrate modules like thin radiators and sometimes even engines, instead of just exploding upon hitting them, thus doing more damage on average when attacking light tanks. It is very important to remember that even 3-5 direct armor penetrating high explosive hits to a cannon barrel can neutralize almost any medium tank type 89 can face, and should anything impenetrable suddenly attack, one can just destroy their gun, to avoid being shot at. This auto cannon allows the type 89 to easily deal with any lightly armored vehicle in the game. It also has access to APDS ammunition which allows it to deal with main battle tanks from the side, though this is usually not advised. 
It is also advisable to avoid attacking tanks like M3 Bradley from long range with a gun without APDS ammunition, as this light tank mostly specializes in annihilating other light tanks, has APDS from the get-go and its hull can block almost any weak long range shots, including the stock APAG. Tanks still can use conventional AG to attack helicopters if it must. Remember to use laser ranger finder to target them quicker when it's researched. Whenever you see that the main gun can't deal with an enemy target or someone caught you off guard, consider using the ATGMs instead. Additional armament. The Type 79 ATGM has around 700mm flat penetration at any range and has start velocity of 200m per second while retaining the high explosive mass of the Type 60 format, making it one of the better ATGMs of the rank, similar to the Warriors Millen 2. This ATGM can deal with most tanks from the front, but be sure to avoid hitting modern NATO and ERA composite armor, as these composite armors will minimize the damage done or even negate it entirely. When facing tanks with active ERA screens like M60 or one Rise, attack the screen with cannon first, if possible, as such ERA plating may reduce damage taken by hostile tank and force you to use both missiles to take them down. Two missiles are located on sides of a turret, with two reserves being stored in the back of the hull, for total. Due to their placement, they only really arrive at crosshair location if target is over 500 meters away, so use them on targets which are away from the tank and practice aim in test drive to be able to use them at melee ranges instead of relying on targeting reticle. Missiles can be launched on the move at any speed as with hybrid medium tanks, user does not have to and should not slow down or stop tank to use them as missile pointer is stabilized. The second missile can be immediately fired after the first one, but firing it will cut off guidance for the first one, so only do this if you are sure it's on correct course. Keep in mind that missile reload is only possible after both of them were fired, and it takes 30 seconds, which is arguably the longest ATGM reload time in the game, while it's matching average per missile reload time of a medium tank. It is overall twice slower than medium tank ATGM reload, three times slower than average reload of single launcher light tanks, and about six times slower than reload of dual launcher specialized ATGM tanks.